Welcome back to another video. I'm very excited to cover fuzzing today as it's a key skill that can't be understated. Now, before we dive in, I just wanted to say thanks to everyone who joined us for our first AppSec live stream last Tuesday. Now, if you didn't catch it, the VOD is on twitch.tv slash the cybermentor. And going forward, we'll be doing these every other week. So the next one coming up will be on March 14th. Keep an eye out for announcements. As always, if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. We always really appreciate your support. Let's dive in. There are many different types of fuzzing, but generally speaking, when it comes to web applications, we can take one of two approaches. The first is to use a curated list of common words such as directory names to uncover endpoints or functionality that we didn't know existed. The second is using random or generated data that could be very long or very short, for example, to try and elicit some odd behavior from within the application. Depending on our goals, we should be thinking about our payloads carefully, especially the word lists that we use as mistakes can easily lead to oversights. Let's consider two scenarios. The first scenario is when we're looking for subdomains. Sending data of hundreds of characters that exceed the URL maximum is unlikely to give us any useful results. In this case, we want to use a curated list of common directory names. In another scenario, we might be fuzzing for the value of a parameter to see how the application handles different types of inputs. In this case, our list of payloads would look quite different. Before we go into the lab section, I will add that fuzzing can be quite destructive. So think carefully about the potential impact on your target application before you unleash thousands upon thousands of requests. So next up, we're gonna take a look at some practical examples. We'll solve these labs both with Burp Suite and an open source tool. So don't worry if you don't have the professional edition of Burp available. Let's take a look. So we're gonna use the lab bookstore as an example, and this is on Try Hack Me. So if you want to come in and take a look at it, then by all means, feel free to come and solve this challenge. And you can see that it's tagged with a beginner level box with basic web enumeration and REST API buzzing. So what I've done so far is found this API documentation page and it has a number of endpoints. So API v2, resources, books, and author, published, ID, for example. And then we also have the random for and uh, retrieve all as well. So we're going to have a look at some of these endpoints. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to refresh this page. So we have some data going into BEP suites. I'm going to switch over to BEP suites. And then we can indeed see that we're accessing the books random for. So this isn't the endpoint that we're going to test. We're actually going to send this to repeater and we're going to take the information from the documentation and we're going to go and test. Let's just do ID equals one. And we get a response. So the endpoint is working correctly. And every time we do this, what we want to do is take a look at the status code. So in this case, 200 and also take a look at the content length as well so 237 so i have a reasonable idea of what the request looks like and what the response looks like so the first thing i do when testing apis or looking to fuzz apis is to look for keywords so things like v2 this tells me that this is probably version 2 of the api endpoint so what I want to test is v1, v3, v4, v0, and etc. Now, because the list of potential payloads is quite low, we can actually just test this manually. So it's kind of like manual fuzzing, I suppose. And all we're going to do is we're going to start with, let's say, v0, send a request, and we get 404 not found. So this is probably not a good result. And then we send v1, and we get 200 OK. So the status code and the data all look the same. So we've got 200 for the status code and 237 for the content length. But this doesn't mean that this endpoint is an exact copy of the V2 endpoints. We need to go ahead and add this to our scope for testing. In a real situation, of course, we would test V1 and V2. But for this lab, we're just going to carry on testing V1 to save a little bit of time. Next up, I want to verify the parameters that this endpoint will accept by fuzzing the parameter name. So if we come back to the documentation, we know that it takes ID, author, 
published and author, of course. But we can't be sure that those are the only payloads that it will accept. So this is going to be our first point of call. I'm going to press Control I to send this to the intruder. And then I'm going to clear the automatic selection. And I'm going to change it to ID. So add this here. And then I'm going to come to payloads. Now we should take a moment to consider the word list that we want to use very, very carefully. If we choose the wrong word list or we don't go through enough of them, we can miss things. On the other hand, if we choose word lists that are too long or too abstract, we'll just be basically wasting our time. Ultimately, you should be thinking about curating your own word lists over time. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at user share, cyclists, discovery, web content, and then we're going to go for the burp parameter names.txt because that's what we're targeting, parameter names. In a lot of cases, parameters are quite similar to directory names as well. So you could use a directory name list for this as well. So open this up and hit start attack. So this is going to take a little bit of time, but while it's running, what I'm going to do is show you wfuzz. So we can do something very similar. So we just do wfuzz. Choose our word lists, user share, word lists, oh, sorry, sec lists, uh, discovery, web content, and burp parameter names. And then what we want to do is we want to ignore 404s. Now, I'll run this quickly without the filtering, and so we can take a look, and then we'll run it again afterwards. And we just want to go http slash slash. And it's 10101931. In fact, we can probably just grab this from Bep Suite. So if we come to repeater, copy this. So 10103, oh, sorry, 19391, port 5000, and then paste this in. And then we want to add the keyword fuzz on the area that we want to fuzz. And I'll just run this for a second so you can see. And you can see when the parameter doesn't exist, we get a 404. So we can filter these out by just adding dash hc and 404. Whoops. Need two dashes, dash dash h hc, 404. And you can see this is running and it's just filtering out all of the 404s. I'm just going to stop this because otherwise I think we might uh, down the target machine and uh, with Burp Suite and WFuzz running both at the same time. But if we come back to Burp Suite and we have a look at the status, it's found author. So this looks like one of the valid parameter names, which is in our documentation. So we have author. And we also want to have a look at the length as well. So to make sure that there aren't others, for example, if we caused an internal server error, we'd see 500 uh, or some other status code. All right, now it's finished and you can see that it's found author ID and published all with status 200. And if we also check for other status codes, we can see that the parameters show gives us a 500 response and we get a nice long error message as well. So you could find this by checking the length too, or you could use some of the other filters or regex. So now that we've found this parameter, what we want to do is come back to our repeater and add show and just do a little bit of manual testing to see what's happening. So we get internal server error and in the error we can see we get this file name is not defined. So this makes it sound like what we actually need to be passing instead of a one is a file name. So for example, if we pass something like I don't exist, we still get the same error. But maybe if we pass a valid file name like passwd, we might get some results and we still don't get anything, unfortunately. So back to fuzzing. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press Control I, send this to Intruder, and it looks like it's highlighted the area that I want to fuzz this time, and come to Payloads. And now I have a choice. So what kind of attacks do I want to try? Since it said file name, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to try LFI payloads. But if you're fuzzing an endpoint and it's giving you slightly weird results, so some results are giving you 500 or some results are giving you different types of data, or maybe the response time is vastly different to a normal request, you might want to think about payloads that include special characters, injection, local file inclusion, server side request forgery, and all sorts of things. So you can go through and logically work your way down and see if you can elicit a response and find a vulnerability. But in this case, all we're going to do is we're going to use Burp Suite's built-in LFI word list. So we can come down here and local files Linux, and we can see a bunch. There are also some, for example, in checklists. So if you come up to fuzzing and you go into LFI, there are some here and you can give that a try as well. So let's hit start attack and see what comes back. And the fact that instantly we can see vastly different content lengths of the responses and 200 status codes means that this attack has probably been successful. So we can see etc past wd, and I suspect when we click on the response, we can see that we found a file inclusion vulnerability. And to do this with wfuzz, so we can switch back over to here, come back up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to show and then equals fuzz. We want to take away the hc404 because we don't want to filter those results anymore. And instead of using the burp suite list, which I'm not exactly sure where that is on the file system, let's try one of the cyclists ones. So fuzzing, LFI, and then maybe LFI graceful security dash Linux and see what this comes back with. And I'll just cancel this quickly because we can see that we already have a bunch of really good results. So as you can see, different responses with different lengths is always a good sign. So if I just come back to Burp Suite quickly and come back to Repeater. So just to reiterate what we did, we found this API endpoint and we first looked at the version. So we had V2. So we naturally looked for V1, V0, V3, V4. In some cases, there will be legacy APIs and other cases, there'll be new APIs where the front end isn't using it yet, but it still exists and maybe it's still half built and in production. After that, we might want to look for other API endpoints. So we didn't do that in this case, but slash books, we might fuzz for other endpoints that exist. And then we look at the parameter name. So I think this is something that a lot of people skip over. They'll only test the parameters that are in the documentation. And it's quite easy to set up a test and leave it running in the background while you're doing other things to test for parameter names that the endpoint might take, but doesn't tell you that it's going to take in the documentation. And of course, once we find the parameters that we want to attack, fuzzing the value of that parameter as well using targeted word lists. So that's it for this video. I'll catch you next Monday for our next video. Or if you want to catch the live stream, don't forget the next one is coming up on the 14th. I'll see you then.